This is the ultimate match up, right? Very excited this morning. Very privileged to be back here in Atlanta. And just so excited because I want to talk about something that's near and dear, not only to me, but to everyone. This idea of making SharePoint business critical. And again, for those I haven't met, my name is Ducks right inside. Feel free to call me Ducks. It's my real name, and I'll tell you the story about that. It's not by a roof. Um, but in the last few years, as we all know, SharePoint is 10, 11 years old already. And uh, there's a lot of great value in the platform. But what I want to talk about in the next 40 minutes or so is looking at how you extend that value, more importantly, making it business critical. So as you listen on, tweet away, jot down notes, take advantage of your action plan so you can bring it back and maximize it for your organization. So let's get going here. Just to give us a little history lesson, SharePoint has been around for a while. And just some impressive stats. There's 125 million licenses and user base so far. Uh, fastest growing Microsoft server product ever in the history of Microsoft, and it's continuously growing. With the recent release of 2013, they made a lot of great inroads in, in uh, development in the area of better usability, um, compatibility, and also in the area of enterprise social. Uh, Christoph, tomorrow will talk more about that, how you maximize enterprise social in your organization. There's over 65,000 customers around the world taking advantage of this platform. Over 700,000 developers and about 67% deployment with organizations that have SharePoint already. Now, here's the question though. In spite of this, in spite of this impressive stat, right, a lot of our, us, we already have this, folks in our organization have it, but uh, how come we still face these challenges? Well, we have business critical data stuck in silos. For example, Invoicing. You guys have invoicing? You love it when you get, or not you, or maybe somebody in line, get all those invoices every month via email. They have to cobble it around, figure out receivables, payables. And they got to figure out when the invoice should go out. If the project's not done yet, no, it shouldn't go out. You do it appropriately, you do it on time. What about issues around? Business users not having direct access to vital data. For example, a lot of large enterprises today work with ERP systems like SAP, PeopleSoft. Right? You guys have CRM? You have HR systems? A lot of this stuff, but, but there's still a disconnect. And unfortunately, today, the killer app. In organizations, no matter what we say, how sophisticated we are, we have got the Surface Pro, we have the iPhone 8, or not iPhone 8, not iPhone 5, Windows Phone 8. Um, <laughs> I have GPS in my car, I have the latest gadgets, but the number one, number one tool in the enterprise today that people rely on, can't live without, is email. 1973 freaking technology. Long live email. I mean, it cracks me up. You know, when iPads came out, executives want to be sophisticated. I'm going to bring my iPad. But what did they really use their iPad? Ooh. So, in spite of SharePoint, we still face these challenges. And the reason being is there's this layer and there's this idea of, oh, uh, SharePoint's good for collaboration, intranet, file sharing. But then there's this whole other world that runs our business. So, there's that gap, there's that chasm, right? We have all these different technologies, and a lot of us run these line of business systems that is the heart and soul of our company. And realistically, I'm not proposing here that you jump all these, get rid of all these, and just go SharePoint all the way. That's not realistic. So what am I proposing here? One of the key values of SharePoint that we don't think about, that we don't look at and consider, is the idea of utilizing it to bridge the gap. Right? So let's, let's look at that. Today, the typical progression of our SharePoint journey is, you know, we deploy it, IT maybe, you know, they download from MSDN, wow, this is cool, you know, we want to improve our email processes or, or just collaboration. We want to improve our internet. Let's roll it out, deploy collaboration stuff. 
you got a portal, every department has their sites, it's all good, right? And unfortunately, a lot of organizations get stuck there. Don't you love it? I've been at organizations where I see, oh hi, you guys have a bunch of SharePoint sites. And as I dig deeper, there's nothing in the site except but one file. People have this idea that, oh, I need to store my file in SharePoint, there do I create a site. Yes? Yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> but then if you get past that hump, you get past the idea of using SharePoint just as a glorified file share, ideally, there's more broader adoption. You can start empowering your users to take advantage of the advanced workloads, things like Maybe they could do reporting where they sell services or a performance point. Maybe they can start working with their office products, synchronizing Excel and Outlook and Word, taking advantage of co-authoring. Maybe they can take advantage of the mobile capability, especially in 2013, or even the social capabilities with the news feeds. And if you're in the cloud using Yammer, right? Well, great. But wait, there's more. Well, there's only uh handful of organizations that's been to this level, the ultimate goal is to take it further and address specific tailored business critical solutions. So when I say critical, it drives money, saves money, increases productivity, interacts with line of business system, all that good stuff. What are the possibilities, Doc? So check this video out. SharePoint in their world. Almost always, your users, the business folks, the audience that SharePoint is supposed to help, would take what they know, what they learned before, and apply to SharePoint storing files. There's no context. I'm working for HR, and I'm dealing with HR stuff. And I know I have my HR people soft systems, and then there's this thing called SharePoint, which is that disconnect. But what if you let SharePoint bridge that gap, right? Where you take advantage of SharePoint as a business platform that you can integrate SharePoint to line business backend systems. In fact, you can do it since 2007. A lot of great capabilities back then. There is uh, BCS, business you know, computing services. You can bring in external lists. You can do a lot of things out of the box. You can deliver business critical solutions. So talking about business critical, we were working with a customer in DC and um, business user, so we started talking about this. She said, Docs, we, you know, we have this process, our customers, the government, and when they send over a, um, uh, like a SOW or a work request, they faxed it. And that's just how it works. You know, with the government, they're playing with it. Uh, they fax their requests. So we at the organization, we, it comes to a fax server, it literally prints it out, so we sometimes emails it to people. And then, we even have to deal with getting that paper, making sure we're alerted, figuring out who's gonna do that work, write the proposal, all that good stuff. But because it's so manual and it's kinda not up to date, sometimes time is of essence, because these SOWs not only comes to us, it goes to other vendors as well. And the way this works, this government entity is they request stop at the last minute due to the nature of what they do, and whoever responds first typically gets the job. Y'all with me? Forget my heavy southern accent. I'm from, I'm from the deep south, Manila, Philippines. Southeast Asia. <laughs> uh, so uh, 
So she was like, yeah, that's her channel. And they had SharePoint on it. And so we started thinking about, okay, she's like, we need to have a way that we'll get alerted quickly, not only via email, but there's some reminder capability, automated workflow for it. So we, quick solution, email enabled libraries. Instead of this fax server faxing it to a specific person, go to this email enabled library, workflow would kick in, assign work. Quick solution, our user solution. It didn't take a day to build it, test it, configure it. At least that's that one thing. Two months later, and we just did that one thing, or we taught it to do that one thing. Two months later, ducks, you know, as I look back compared to before, their win rate over projects of that nature because they were able to respond quickly went up 40%. But change, change, change. So, so what I urge you to do is start thinking about these things. What are some of the things in your world, it doesn't have to be complex, it can be as simple as that, that you can run in SharePoint and maximize its value. Think about surfacing line of business data. This is another big thing today. Any uh, chief marketing officers here, CMOs, CIOs? A key in, in this global economy that we're in today Understanding your key performance. Are you making money or are you not making money? Are the projects ahead or the projects behind? How's the productivity? What's your demand? How did we perform Q1 versus Q2? A lot of this data is in disparate systems. Don't you love to play the game where every week you have like a manager's meeting and then I, we go to SAP, PeopleSoft, Oracle, copy some data there, copy some data here, pop it in Excel, push it up, and then you do your meeting. Y'all with me? What if you, in the process of doing that, new data comes in, you just miss it. You just close a big deal somewhere. Now your reporting is off. But what if you can tie all this in your SharePoint as a reporting platform? What are the possibilities? So, what you have to think about is think beyond this idea that SharePoint is a one-trick pony. Think beyond that SharePoint can only help us with document management, which is true, records management, which is true, but today, you want to maximize its ability to be a business critical platform. Instead of investing on other platforms that might cost more, or might not even be compatible with existing systems we have. This is a great survey um, and interviews that was done back in October 2012, looking at the ROI impact of the key values within organizations. And one of the interesting things, and this reports up at Microsoft, is the big thing, you know, right now, it doesn't even have to be complex, if we can simplify data entry access. That's it. I mean, a simple example, like in my organization, we have a bunch of different customer databases, contacts. We have one for our marketing, where we blast out newsletters, we use constant contact, anybody know that? And then for our sales stuff, we have CRM. And then individually in the company, all of us have our Outlook personal address book, and then we have a global address book. And, and in some cases, and I'm sure you've experienced this, you know, somebody forgot to put a note here, and somebody forgot, oh, we already pinged this customer. There's just that disconnect, because it's in different systems. If we can just have a one-stop shop, we put that data in, put the notes in, and it'll just synchronize it all over the place. What if we could do that? Well, guess what? SharePoint can do that. Let me show you a demo uh, that was recorded by a good friend of mine from uh, Connected Software. He's a Microsoft partner as well. Check this out. Let's see here, we have a couple of servers, SharePoint Exchange, Dynamics CRM, Navision, and PeopleSoft. Uh, can click those, and we can choose contacts. Uh, use SharePoint as the master. Let's go look at what contacts we have, and we have one contact in each system. Let's go have a look. We have an Exchange contact. In this case, displayed in Outlook. We have. A SharePoint contact with a CRM contact. We have one in Oracle PeopleSoft and 
we have one in the vision in this case, Brian Lloyd. We've only picked one out of many out of the demo environment. So let's synchronize. And as you can see here, we have all the contacts in all the various systems. Let's go check. Let's do a refresh here. And it's an exchange. Do a refresh here. And we have it here in our SharePoint. CRM has it as well. Let's go check PeopleSoft. There we are, all of them here. And finally in the vision, we've got them as well. That was the five ways contact sync demo for the CNS Media Gateway. You can synchronize and uh, do workflows with all kinds of systems, not only with contacts, but with every entity like appointments or tasks, etc., etc. For more, please check www.connectingsoftware.com. So, what do you think of that? Right? Very simple example, but that's a common delivery business issue in the world. Talk to a lot of people, a lot of organizations where something as simple as that can cost them a lot of money. Can you lose, help them lose or win a deal? SharePoint's already open for them. You got to think beyond the traditional systems of record. So, for those who are not familiar with this term, the idea of systems of record is traditionally we have different systems. The engineering team has a product like cycle management tool, sales has CRM. So, it's very siloed. You know, sales people do their stuff. Engineering do their stuff, procurement do their stuff. And then if they want to talk to each other, and then somehow, especially if they don't have access, they export the data to Excel and then they just do nothing. Because of the world we're in and the technologies we have, we got to move past this very siloed, very individualistic view of these systems and then move towards what's called systems of engagement. And this idea of systems of engagement is very powerful and multifaceted. It's not just the idea of people sharing information with each other within the company, but thinking about how you can engage not only within employees, within departments, but directly with customers as well. So for example, and you know, I'm just talking from experiences from, from customers that uh, we work with, and we help customers roll out project management systems using the Microsoft stack, so one of the interesting things we hear often is, uh, Docs, you know, we, we want, uh, want to put a very sophisticated portfolio management system or a project management system. So we almost always recommend a product called Project Server. But one thing they always tell me is two things. Docs, the problem is, number one, our developers enter their time in our payroll system. Is that something right? Or some other time sheeting system. We can't expect them to enter their time again in the project management system that we're going to put. Can you tie that? And that's another thing is our financial data around projects, while project server can do financial stock and budgets, it's sitting elsewhere in some financial system. And then our accounts receivable people, they have a different system, efficient invoices. In an ideal world, what we would like is our resources doing projects, this is a construction firm, they're on the field, they're on their tablet, they would say task done, when they say task complete 100%, somehow the system would not only enter the status, but it will integrate with receivables saying send the invoice, it will deduct the budget in the financial platform, it might send a news feed on your uh, social implementation to say, this task is done. And then Yammer, maybe somebody giving them a praise, good job, Docs. Yeah, okay. And you're done, and that's the idea of systems of engagement. What's critical about this is the processes. And I'll talk more about why business processes are critical. So again, this idea of enterprise social, I know some organizations are queasy about this concept. I just think there's a misunderstanding around enterprise social. 
The quote I love about enterprise social, uh, again, uh, first off, we'll talk more about this tomorrow, is from Gardner. Gardner says, you know, enterprise social is, the idea of enterprise social is not posting cat pictures or saying what you had lunch, what had for lunch. The idea of enterprise social is to enhance collaboration, communication, and coordination for business purposes, period. That's it. Thank you. She liked it. It didn't say anything about enterprise social is liking, news feeding, tagging, yammering, Facebooking, Twittering, Foursquaring. You gotta stop it. I keep going. Because we're, we're so technology buzzword approach where, oh, we need enterprise social. Okay, for what? What does that mean to Ms. Betty, an accountant who's processing invoices? Being able to use SharePoint as a business critical platform allows us to deliver this promise. So, in short, what does business critical SharePoint provide? First and foremost, access to data, surfacing relevant information at the right time for the right people. That's huge. Number two, visibility across teams. And this is, again, one of the promises of enterprise social. Even if you're not looking for it, that's why we all love Facebook, right? We get connected with people, and not necessarily we're looking for, hey, what's happening with David? I haven't seen David in a year. Because he's my friend. Not really, I'm just saying. Maybe after this, he's going to friend me. Uh, but all his new updates, where he went, his family, I'll see that. It's more of a push in for me. I know what's going on. Oh, David's birthday's coming up. I agree. But what about the apply that concept to the enterprise where, especially in a large organization, I just finished this project, but based on those feeds and information, it can help you in your team, your group. So another benefit is uh, efficiency, reducing manual processes, and the most powerful thing here is effective decision making. You can act upon it right away. Another story I'd like to share is a customer we work with, the EPA, is um, they projected the work we help them with, allowing them to service project-based information would help them save $2 million the first two months once it's deployed. Because they can act upon it, they can see real time. This is another great story. And this is a very compelling story. When we talk about the value of business critical SharePoint in commercial terms, this is talking about life and death terms. BHRUT hospitals, and I sent the full case study on Twitter here, if you want to read more about it. Here's the, the big picture story. So in 2009, in the UK, there, they did a, a uh, survey. They found there's 850,000 incidents and 3,500 deaths because of poor clinical handover. Now, what do you mean by clinical handover, Gus? Clinical handover is the idea of healthcare professionals interacting with a patient from the moment the doctor asks, you know, figures out what's wrong with the patient sending that information to the nurse, maybe to the pharmacy, to the other doctors. As you can see, there's a lot of intricate processes, but unfortunately, the systems are disparate. The processes, not all of them are there. They rely on paper, they rely on word of mouth. Life and death time is of essence. Y'all with me? So, Dr. Um, Chaudhry instituted this initiative with his hospital system and we've got to fix this. We've got to figure this out. They had SharePoint, they had all the systems. They engaged the partner out in the UK, essentially implement a SharePoint based solution called eHandover that connects SharePoint with their line of business systems, taking advantage of workflow capabilities, reporting capabilities. And because of that, patient safety, security, and satisfaction was much improved. There's statistics on the case study. Again, I just tweeted, you can see that. And that's very important. We're not even talking about money here, we're talking about life and death. We're talking about improved productivity, transparency, especially in the life sciences world, where compliance is huge. And then, obviously, improved reputation, thanks to SharePoint. So there's a lot of promise that we can take advantage of, but now the big question is, okay, that's great, I like it, good idea, there's a lot of things I can do in my world, but how do I get started, what should I do? Okay, so I'm going to share three high-level steps 
to get you going, and I'll provide recommendations as well through all the different sessions that we have in these two days on how you can be successful utilizing SharePoint as a business critical platform. First things first, you gotta rapidly prioritize needs. The power of, the share, of SharePoint as a platform is that it has a lot of great cap capabilities and you can deliver solutions right away. If you're in a five year SharePoint project, something is wrong. Okay? So what do you mean? What I mean is business matters. SharePoint doesn't matter. Sorry, my friend. You don't kick me out there. Business matters. I love this quote from uh, my good friend Dan Holm and Christian Buckley. I saw this quote when they're doing a presentation. I go, that's it. You know, we, we get too hung up on the technology as technologists. Yesterday in uh, the workshop, you know, I, I shared a story that in my past life, I used to be a dragon boat rover. There's a quote from dragon boat rover. The boat is a way to get us to the destination, the finish line. We don't care about the boat, we care about the finish. Unfortunately, that's opposite what we do today. We just care about SharePoint. We don't really care about the finish. Stop selling the bulk. Start selling the destination. Business matters. Look at, okay, what are initiatives in this fiscal year? What are strategic drivers that we can look at where the low-hanging fruits to, gain, to have financial gains. And there's a lot of things you can look at. On one end, how you make more money. On the other end, how you can decrease expenses or decrease costs. Second is expedited innovation. And again, that's a promise of social capabilities in, in SharePoint. We're in an amazing time today where technology makes us connected. I don't know if that's good or bad, but you can make decisions right away, brainstorm on ideas, Look at what others have done, and you can expedite this. Be there faster, sooner than your competitor. Lastly, facilitate better engagement. So think about these three buckets in your world, and then look at specific things on how you can rapidly identify and come up with. And then the next step is you have to prioritize. You can't do it all, you can't do everything. I'll talk more about this in my sessions later. I have a session later called Five Deadly Sins of SharePoint. But in essence, what you have to do is look at what's immediate that you can provide value. Number one, what's immediate? Number two, what's a low-hanging fruit? What I mean by low-hanging fruit is low risk for everyone. It doesn't take too much time, too much money. Change management won't take too much. I'm sure your business users love taking trainings on SAP, Soft, Oracle, right? Right? There you go. So what's a low-hanging fruit? So prioritize low-hanging fruits, get immediate wins, and then continue to build on that. Number two, the second step to deliver business critical SharePoint success. Once you identify those business needs and prioritize it, the next step is identify, okay, what are the processes involved? Can we improve it? Can we come up with something new? And then layer the technology in. So here's an example. What's your game plan, right? So I want to show a very, this screenshot, in fact, I'll show uh, an example of what it is over here. Take advantage of, I don't know if this is There you go. So here's a sample of a Visio process diagram, which we're working with a customer right now essentially helping them improve their current project management processes, taking advantage of their SharePoint platform and hooking up with their line of business system. So before we start touching stuff, it's very important to say, okay, indulge us, customer. Just tell us about how you select your project. Okay, Docs, we're a relatively mature organization. We have project management offices, so you know, here's the first thing we do, review and complete scorecard, right? And then after we do that, Executives look at it, review it, talk about it, and then update our planning processes based on the project and rerun a report, whatever. So you got to do this. And in fact, some of you might be thinking, well, Docs, good for you, bless your heart, but uh, 
I don't think we need this. I mean, all we're going to start working with is little things, you know, like expense reimbursement process, hooking up with our financial system. Do we really need to identify these things before we start hooking stuff up or building workflows? Absolutely. Because the amazing thing you'll find if you start doing this with key business folks is, number one, almost always, not almost always, but half the time, there's going to be some disconnect. Oh, I thought we do it this way. No, we do it that way. It's funny, like, in a lot of some of the projects I work with, I talk to executives, dogs, we want a dashboard. You hear that? Dashboard? It's a secret to career success. You want to get promoted at work? Go see your boss, one word, dashboard. Instant promotion. Docs, we want a dashboard, right? But before we look at your dashboard, let's look at all your metrics, KPIs, processes. We don't have time for that. All we need is a red, yellow, green. Okay. Ten executives in the room. What does red mean? When it's late. What does late mean? Two weeks, three years, five months. I just step aside, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Very important. Why it's important is really get everybody on the same page. What are we trying to do? What are we trying to achieve? Can we improve it? But here's the second thing that we don't think about. By identifying process this way, well, guess what? We can shape the solution around this that's relevant to them. We don't just say, how do you like their SharePoint site? Surveys, clickies, calendars. You want to supersize it? Let's do BCS2. Next. Hey, PMO, this is your PMO selection system. Go ahead. The third thing that why this is important, and we don't think about this, well, guess what? We just identified roles and responsibilities. Based on this, well, here's what the PMO folks would be doing, the division controller would be doing, executives. That's how you're going to train them. No more, go take a four day training, everything you can learn about SharePoint. Executives, I'm gonna give you 30 minutes training on how you do first project selection on using this system, final selection, approving budget. That's it, very relevant. Is this helpful? Now, wait, there's more. So how do you implement this, Docs? So, you know, I showed a visual diagram, you can do it multiple ways. Once you set that in place, you identify the data sources, the systems, you can go do it. You can do it out of the box SharePoint, you can custom code it. But the good news is, especially in the SharePoint ecosystem, there's a lot of great partners. So I'm going to show you another video kind of talking about that in a different scenario around POs. And uh, I'll just show you. It's from uh, our good partner, Agile Point. And then uh, just check out how they do this. So, in this scenario, their POs are um, PO information stored in SAP. So with their platform, you can easily draw the process, and not only draw the process, based on a specific step in the process, connect it to a line of business system, in this case, SAP. And for the geeks out there, and I'm sure you understand what's going on here, you're mapping the tables in the field, what to look at. Uh, so the idea is SharePoint, would be the front end, the platform, to allow users to interact not only with the PO invoicing, but again, think about my example earlier about projects. Imagine if you have a project site, everything's there, tasks, documents, deliverables, and then financial stuff there too. You don't want your users to go elsewhere. So what if we have something like this, we tie it, design the process, tie the invoicing stuff within that same project site, and as this tool shows you, it's all visual, drag and drop. Obviously, there's certain training and process background that people need. But uh, once it's done, you can look at the whole approval process. You can tie the line of business systems. That same data is stored in the same repository of your SharePoint side or the project side. I'm sure they can show you more stuff in a lot of use cases. but. Again, examples like this prove to show the value of SharePoint as a platform. Step three, to read the benefits of BCSP success is you have to win consistently. You have to drive value. You don't just do this one thing and then, woo, we're done. 
No, maximize the platform. Start looking at other stuff in the business. Are there other pain points, other business units? Other things we're doing right now? You gotta think about winning consistently. Now, what does winning look like? <laughs> Hopefully not hitting. I think he's finding it. <laughs> not drinking tightly. Okay, so, what does winning look like? Winning looks different for every organization. And why I say this, and why it's important, Everyone is unique. While there's a guidance, like earlier, I showed you typical SharePoint journey. Well, um, initial adoption, more advanced business workload, and then business critical solution. Well, in some of your world, that might not be true. Well, Ducks, you know, for us to gain better traction after we roll it out, we gotta jump to business critical solutions right away. I was talking to, to Ty yesterday about how mature their organization is from New Belgium, and he'll talk more about it earlier. We're doing a lot of good business critical stuff. If that's what it takes, go for it. Now here's the important part. At the end of the day, you can build fancy stuff, business critical stuff, but if nobody's taking advantage of it, what's the point? You gotta think about the idea, listen, it's big. You ready? This idea of sustainable adoption. We always think about adoption equals training. Well, that's part of it. It's not enough. How do you sustain adoption not only around user adoption, right? How do you sustain the solution itself? How do you drive the platform forward and grow it? And fast forward, look at it in the future. You see, if you drive SharePoint and take advantage of it as a business critical platform, there's a satisfaction survey that was done seeing, look, if SharePoint is business mission critical, it's more valuable. And in some kinds, that's what we fight with, right? Especially in IT, it's an uphill battle. Thus, how do I get my users to take advantage of it? How do I get my executives to take advantage of SharePoint more? I love this stuff, but they're using other tools, which clearly is not good. Well, make it business critical. Make it on their terms. If it means better invoice processing, figure out how you do that with the platform, right? Grow your solutions through time. And again, every company is different. Don't do everything all at once. Like I said, step one, rapidly prioritize needs and pick the low-hanging fruit. Think about who can you help the most and who has the most pain. Number two, identify the processes once you pick that solution you want to do. And third, grow it through time. And boy, there's a lot of great stories out there. And I just tweeted other case studies around how powerful it is to take advantage of SharePoint as a business critical problem. And that's why I'm excited these two days because there's a lot of great study, uh, case studies and stories on how SharePoint transformed organizations for financial gain, expediting innovation, and even facilitating better engagement. So hopefully this gets you going in these two days. Hopefully this gives you a great idea what you should think about, what you should write down, and tomorrow, We'll definitely work on your action plan. So what do you guys think? You ready for share?